I'm going to talk about functional extinction and the eight paths by which humans are driving themselves to functional extinction. Once a species is functionally extinct, it is possible to keep it alive in, for example, a zoo or some other artificial environment. Commonly recognized environments for humans include places like cities. These are not our normal habitat where humans can live and grow indefinitely. Instead, they require inputs from outside the city brought in to support human life. Eight distinct paths to functional extinction include, the oldest of them, to my knowledge, comes from Natalia Shakova and colleagues when at the 2008 European Geophysical Union meetings, they concluded that a release of up to 50 gigatons of hydrate is highly possible for abrupt release at any time. They concluded this would lead to about a 1.3 degree Celsius global average temperature rise in a relatively short period of time. They did not say in the abstract or in Shakova's presentation, they did not say that an ice-free Arctic was required for such a burst of methane. They said that it's highly possible for abrupt release at any time. Even if the global average temperature rise is closer to half a degree than 1.3 degrees C, I suspect that would still lead to functional extinction because the rate of change is so profoundly important. Second item, methane release from terrestrial permafrost not only from the relatively shallow seabed of the Arctic Ocean, but also from permafrost in the circumboreal region, has been measured up to more than 8,000 parts per million in YAML. This based on a paper in Geosciences from the 23rd of November, 2018. So already we're seeing exponential increase of methane in the atmosphere, and those are two sources of likely future increases in methane in the atmosphere. As I've mentioned many times, methane is more than 100 times more powerful a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide molecule per molecule. Third route or path to functional extinction is continued industrial activity. Civilization is a heat engine that is warming the planet, as I pointed out repeatedly in this space and at the blog GuyMcPherson.com. In addition, decreased industrial activity, as little as 35% reduction in industrial activity could cause a one degree Celsius global average temperature rise that would take us well beyond the point at which we've ever had humans in the past. And the rate of that would rapidly exceed the ability of humans and most other organisms to keep up. So this paradox of increased industrial activity leading to extinction and decreased industrial activity leading to extinction has been termed the, par the McPherson paradox by others. Fifth, there is a decline in grain harvest that would hamper the ability of this civilization to process because this civilization, like all of its predecessors, depends upon the ability to grow, store, and distribute grains at scale. We, according to a paper in Soil Systems on June 1st, 2018, there's been a 83.3% decline of earthworms around the globe. That makes it increasingly difficult to maintain a healthy soil and therefore to grow grains at scale. Sixth, the ice free Arctic in 2016, plus or minus three years, as reported by Maslowski and colleagues in the 2012 issue of In Your View of Earth and Planetary Sciences, and as summarized, the, the science for which the accelerating self-reinforcing feedback loops that would follow has been reported by as unusual a source as the president of Finland going back to August of 2017 in a press conference with President Trump in the United States. Seventh, financial collapse leading to economic collapse, which means a reduction in industrial activity, therefore a loss of global dimming or the aerosol masking effect that would cause global average temperature to rise very rapidly. And finally, there is the currently underway El Nino Southern Oscillation 
The ocean is a battery that stores carbon dioxide and heat, and during an El Nino Southern Oscillation event, that heat in the carbon dioxide is released from the ocean, causing the planet to warm up quite quickly, quite abruptly. And so this could take us beyond the two degrees Celsius non-target proposed by a Nobel Prize winning economist in 1977 and thoroughly discarded as being relevant by scientific work to come. So there you have it, eight distinct paths to functional extinction. Will a few people survive a bit longer in bunkers that are well stocked? Perhaps, if you can call that living. And we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, probably the last mass extinction on planet Earth because this one will almost undoubtedly destroy all life on Earth. At the edge of extinction, only love remains.